let me get into the let me get into the recap a little bit. Um, there, it's it tends to be a thing of of debate um, whether or not you should recap machines. There's a lot of people saying you don't need it, everything's fine. You know, you can test these caps and they'll be fine. Other people saying even if they're fine today, they're not going to be fine in another ten, five, however many years from now. You should do it. Um, for me, it is it is more about. I am um, firmly in the camp of all electrolytic aluminum electrolytic capacitors are going to fail. They're just they are going to fail. Um, the problem with people trying to do recaps is they think recaps fix everything on the machine, and they don't. Right? You have to know what you're doing with the recap and what you're going to get out of it. The other thing is, uh, rework on vintage machines is not always easy. Uh, so a lot of people are liable to do more damage recapping a machine that doesn't need it uh, and they go and recap a machine they do it wrong I have literally gotten a machine in for repairs here where someone had recapped it and not cut the legs off on the bottom half of the board and they were all just squished down there shorting everything together um, so I, I do recommend that systems get recapped but I insist that systems get recapped correctly Really want the Dreamcast, you're going to put a mode in there and don't want to fry that thing. Oh, for the, yeah, the Dreamcast power supply, the Dreamcast power supply could use a recap. I have done mine. You had the PSU for the 2E done. That was after the Rifa. Oh, yeah. Rifa's, Rifa capacitors in, in the Apple 2E power supplies are definitely a thing. And, uh, oh, John Morris will absolutely do a great job on that. Yeah, the spider recap. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> It was it was bad. I was like, "What in the hell?" Um, but all right, so we got we got our cap kit, and uh, yeah, I'm seeing uh, Nichikan. Uh, this looks like um, back to the overhead. We've got we've got some uh, some Nichikans here. Whoops, we got some. These look like Kemet, uh, another very good brand. Uh, the big guy right here, uh, he's a Rubicon. That's fine. Um, yeah, Nichikan, uh, more Kemets, um, yeah, so, so, good quality capacitors on this, no, no problems there. Uh, BWAC says, uh, they recapped a CD32 and forgot to cut the legs of the big cap, ooh, ouch, 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 yeah, yeah, poor Kansas Fest. Found someone locally that does all sorts of awesome retro console work. Oh, nice. That's awesome, Rex. That, that's really good to hear. Cool thing about the 6309, which has been out since 86. Yeah. While we knew it ran cooler and rated for 3 megahertz, all the registers were unknown in North America in 1992 because they were undocumented. Yeah, um, apparently Hitachi just never released the documents on the uh, ad advanced features of the 6309. So, yeah, it took a long time to figure out. PSU is meant to be a C65 power supply. Already been through disappointment. <laughs> Ouch. Overcurrent saved it. Yeah, overcurrent. Overcurrent protection on power supplies. Very, very good. So yeah, let's um, let's go ahead and and dig into this. Uh, I'm still experimenting with camera angles and and lighting. So for the time being, I think this is what we got. But I think everything is pretty visible. Uh, so I. I don't know if this is if this cap kit is just for the logic board or if it's also for the power supply, uh, but we'll find out. If it's not, I can always you know, go to my cap stash, and I'm going to start the vacuum gun heating up. Wait, actually, uh, ah, before we get to that, actually, we need to do another another bit of uh, yak shaving. This is my TS-100 soldering iron. Um, I've switched over my bench to using this because uh, it's smaller than the Heiko, and honestly, for me, it does just as good a job. For a lot of people, they don't, they're, they're, they're not so keen on these sorts of hobbyist irons. Personally, I'm totally fine with it. I like it a lot. But there was a new firmware come out, so we're going to upgrade the software on our soldering iron before we get started. Uh, so with these... The one that has the USB-C port. No, this is this is the 100 that has a just a DC barrel jack, uh, which is fine for me because uh, you can supply it anything from 12 to 24 volts, and I got plenty of those. But I have a 24 volt supply. 
so if you hold down the button closest to the tip and then plug in the iron, it pops up there and says DFU. So with that running, let me see if I can get uh, let me find it. Yeah, so uh, it, it shows up as a little tiny little tiny uh, storage device. <laughs> well, um, device firmware update is what that stands for. But uh, yeah, that's 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 not a bad uh, not a bad expansion of that. But uh, you just literally take the ts100.hex file and drop it on here. And this is going to go actually really quick because as soon as I drop this in the directory, all right, it's going to copy it, and then it goes poof and comes back and it says ts100.ready the RDY, and it that's that's the iron's way of saying to me firmware update applied correctly. So, um, yeah, now, uh, go back to the uh, zoom in bench cam. Uh, can unplug the USB, because it, it, it will run the microprocessor on USB, but it won't solder. Won't do any, won't actually boot the, boot the firmware. Um, plug this in, so now we can, uh, Go into menus here and see. Yeah, all right. Power settings, power source DC. No, wait. Uh, uh, nope. Come on. Power source DC. The the menu is is a little funky with just two buttons. Soldering settings. Uh, boost temp set to 420. Nope. Heat on power up, nope. Five degrees at a time. All right, soldering sleep mode. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it wiped out my settings. I think we're good. Do you need to get back to uh, soldering settings because I want to set that back to four twenty. All right, so now it's just showing uh, 26 degrees, you know, the ambient temperature of the LCD, uh, of the of the tip here. Read hidden instructions in 6309. Speculations in Motorola didn't ask for the extra features when they got Hitachi to second source it with CMOS and didn't let Hitachi tell anyone. Oh, interesting. Which they discovered as people experimented trying to find why bad code crashed. Oh, that's cool. Ludwarski bought an Atari 800 XL yesterday. That's good. That is excellent. I do hope you enjoy it. Um, I hope you can uh, manage to, to source uh, an Ultimate Cartridge or a FujiNet or something like that. Or, um, what's the other one? An S-Drive Max. That's also a decent peripheral. Um, yeah, it sounds like, yeah, just people... I, I know people have hunted for, you know, undocumented opcodes on other chips before, like the 65CO2. So that, that's kind of interesting. All right, and then uh, the other thing I want to do here is change out the tip. Uh, because I've got a... Uh, I've got a conical, conical tip on it right now because I was doing some uh, more precision work on something else. Hey, Retro Rewind CA, good to see you. Uh, how you doing this evening? Uh, we were just uh, updating the firmware on my soldering iron before we get started here. And now I'm going to change the tip as well um, because for larger work like this, I would rather have my usual tip. These, these are nice tips. They're, they're where the tip is integrated into the heating element, so it's direct heat, and um, I, I ran into some problems with some tips on my Heiko, because, um, well, honestly, just because I was using crappy tips. Uh, I bought real Heiko tips, and, and they got much better, but for this, I'm gonna put in the uh, knife tip, which is the one I usually use on this iron. Uh, that's the other reason I like having this iron, is that I can run a large like knife tip on this, and then I can put uh, SMD or uh, other precision tip on my Heiko. So I have just grab a different iron to get a different tip. Didn't actually get either one. Bought an AVG cart. AVG cart is good too. Yeah. Um, the reason I have the Ultimate cart instead of AVG is the Ultimate cart will work 
on the uh, 400 and 800. And I do have, I do have one of them. I have a 400. Yes, all hail El Curtis Boyle with his cocoa knowledge. All right, so soldering iron's ready. And the desoldering iron is also ready. So I think it is time to dig into this. Um, so yeah, we were, we were just looking at, uh, at, the, at your stuff there. Uh, Retro Rewind, um, comparing the your Kung Fu Flash with uh, the Future was 8-bit version. And uh, I really like this printing on, on this case. Um, it's 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 clearly printed, but man, it's printed really nice, and it's it's a nice case to to hold. And uh, good job with the label here. Um, it's nice and shiny and looks looks really good. All right, so I'm gonna set the uh, Coco STC aside and flip flip it to Coco. Like I said, I have never been in this machine, so I don't really know what to expect. Sixty-eight or nine, a few hidden instructions. Both those are alternate opcodes to existing instructions. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. All right, sorry. I'm just going to tell my phone to be quiet here for a little bit. And we'll proceed digging in. See if you have a 1986 gimme or an 87 gimme. I thought we are, I thought I already determined that I had an early gimme. That you sent me a piece of software to to check, and I think it determined that that I had the early gimme. But yeah, we will find out. All right, so that's the four case screws here. But I'm guessing because this one was covered by a warranty sticker, which is already well voided. Is there anything under here? Doesn't feel like it. I'm gonna guess I have to do its its brother over here as well. Look for corrosion, electrolyte leaks. Yeah, I'll just take a take a look at this board. I usually try to get inside all the machines that I get when I acquire them, but I've just honestly have not given much love to this poor Coco 3, despite what I spent on it, which is outrageous. Alright. Got some honker got some honker screws here. And of course they are different lengths. So there's two two long boys, two shorter ones. Let me get my bin out. And then right, wait, where's the Missing one here. It's another another short jobby. Yes, definitely got to make sure I put them in the right place. Uh, how much was it? I paid, I think, around three hundred for this Coco Three, which is sadly about the going rate for a Coco Three these days. Um, all right, so that's the top case. Uh, that looks that looks fine. Um, this is all this is all glue. None, none of that is is corrosion or dirt or anything. That that looks pretty good. Um, this you know this whole machine is is yellowed and has a few dings in it, but uh, yeah, it's 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 generally fine. Um, I am missing a screw though. Where did where could it possibly have gone? That's that's no fun. That is that is no fun at all. It's still in there, is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no wait. No wait, yeah. Um hmm. Short of screw. That's that is not good. Replacement Coco 3 motherboard being worked on as well as a gimme and salt chip replacement. Oh, okay. That's cool. Big cap sometimes looks like it has leaked. It's just glue that turns funky brown after years. Yeah, yeah. It's hard where people I know don't even put the screws back in. I, I, I definitely put screws back in. I definitely put screws back in. All right. Okay, 
Okay, so now that that is gone, I can move this aside. It must... This is crazy. It must have rolled around on my desk when I turned this over. But I just do not see it. Well, I'll have to find it later. Yeah, well, that's I, I do know people who, yeah, actually just run their com computers completely w without um, screws. Like uh, some of my friends with the Amigas, so they can pop the uh, compact flash cards in and out. That's true. Keyboard ribbon can we just pull out? Yep, all right, so we'll go ahead and do that. And I see it's it's got a nice uh, flex backing on here, so I can just do that guy. Um, nice, nice keyboard mechanism here. I assume it's still a, a you know, Mylar dome, but this, this is a decent keyboard as old keyboards go. I'm gonna be looking for this thing. I'm gonna be looking for that darn screw for hours after the stream is over. I can tell. Yeah, better than the original Coco one. Not not saying a lot, but uh, it is better. All right, so it looks like we've got yeah quite a few electrolytics on this board. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So yeah, I'm. I guess that. Uh, I guess these are just uh, for the main board. Now, actually, looking inside this, so this this power connector here just pulls off. Um, this this quote-unquote power supply really just looks to be a transformer. So I guess the rest of the power supply circuit is here on the board. And yeah, because here's our regulator. All right, so there's no separate power supply to recap. That's cool. A foot will find it. It might. Might find it during this stream. Alrighty, so we got a screw here, logic board. Further hardware questions, you've exhausted your hardware knowledge. I need hair soldering tips, yikes. That doesn't sound good. Alright, so that comes, and then I guess this card, or expansion board connector is, is on uh, mounts as well. So let me get a different screwdriver and get those out. Alright, and out she comes. I will just set this base with its screws aside. Uh, set in my chair over here so I don't step on it. All right. So here's here's our here's our uh, machine. So Curtis, what am I looking at? 627VC188 Looking at the gimme. Oh yeah, so 1986. Copyright handy 1986 on the gimme. Um, but alright. Yeah, I see there's the there's the glue on the bottom of these uh super nasty caps there. But yeah. I I mean honestly, I suspect that most of these capacitors are okay. Um, but, you know, sort of preventive maintenance. Now that I see these connectors right here, there's, there's a little bit of gunk on these. Uh, so maybe something was, was spilled into this at one point. I don't know. And actually there is what looks like a little bit of green corrosion over by this, this big smoothing cap. So when we get those off, I'll, I'll make sure I get in there and, and, and clean it, clean the board well. ESR could have slipped. Yeah, yeah. 
I might throw a few of them on my on my really terrible cap uh, checker just for the heck of it. But like I was saying before, yeah, they are they are thirty years old. Like I was saying before, um, all electrolytic caps are going to fail, and and a proper recapping job by someone who's not going to screw up the board, and using decent parts, uh, I I always recommend that for these old machines, because they are these parts are way beyond their intended service life. Uh, all right, so big old, all right, so this is marked emitter base collector here on this. So this is not marked like a linear regulator that's interesting um is is this a linear regulator or is it or is it something else it's a good thing you bought some replacement caps of course boris you make sure you do everything properly yeah yeah um i was looking over i was looking over your cap kits um because, you know, why the heck not? And I was just like, well, I have most of these, but I don't have this one, this one, and this one. And I was just like, ah, I'll just order the whole kit. And it'll be nice to see what, what your kits are like. And, you know, of course, I'm very pleased to see quality brand uh, capacitors in this kit. Hmm. All right, well, this just f apparently fell out from the case. Some sort of uh, rubber shock mount, I guess. We'll, uh, we'll just dump that. Sometimes the gimme works its way free from the socket. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, yeah. Um, do you think it's worth getting the PLCC extractor out and just reseeding the whole gimme? My PLCC extractor is not that hot. <laughs> and then, all right, yeah, so we got our, we got our RAM up here, 4164s. Um... Sorry, 41, yeah, I was like, that's not, can't be right. Yeah, these are 41 464s. So these are, these are uh, four bits by 64 case for a total of 128 K. So I'm just gonna start uh, depopulating the board and then I'm gonna take notes here on my old engineering pad, my multicolored pen as I pull them. <clears throat> yeah, 44 64s or 41 64s, exactly. Don't they just get more loose the more the chip is taken in and out? I, I mean, yes. These these sockets only have a number a limited number of insert and remove cycles, but I'm assuming that this has had one insertion cycle. Yeah. All right. The PLCC sockets and the cocos become very fragile, so I'm just not going to mess with that. Uh, I don't think I have a PLCC socket on hand that's the right size for this. I have some, but uh, I don't think I have one this big. All right. Let's let's get going. So I have my cheap and crappy ZD-985 desoldering gun. And I'm going to give this the old ramrod treatment to make sure it's clear, which of course it is not. So I'll wait for that to heat up. Because it's of course gone into sleep mode. Carefully you've cracked many a socket. Yeah. Thanks for the warning. I appreciate that. Um, vacuum guns are so useful and so essential when doing these big recap jobs. Uh, but I, I'm a hobbyist. I don't do this for a living. I'm not going to buy the 300 and some dollar Heiko, much less the, you know, $800. What is it? Not Pace, but um, maybe it's the Weller. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm using I'm using the the hundred and eighty dollar AliExpress version, and it it works generally well enough, but uh, it does tend to jam a lot because the front here gets nice and hot, and the back gets cool. And when solder flies down this tube, it will sometimes jam on the back of this thing and then cool down because this is a lot cooler than that, and you wind up with jams. And then you know solder just collects inside your your vacuum tube. Where did I put that? Namcos, thank you so much for the raid. How are you doing this evening? Uh how how was how did your stream go? What were you what were you streaming tonight? Uh Retrofox is stuck with the kind the bulb on a tube. I mean if you only do occasional work that's that works fine, yeah. 
Let me see if this is heated up enough to try and uh, push out this jam. Nope. Oh, Amiga Gamer, thank you for shouting out Namcos. Appreciate it. 4700 at... Y yeah. Um, well, the, the, the 4700 was glued down. Uh, it looks like this glue has completely cracked and turned into an absolute nightmare of a mess here. An Etch-A-Sketch. This is interesting. Stream was good, as always. Having another look at the at, into the MSX on the Mister. Oh, nice. I have never played with the MSX on my Mister. Is some sort of some sort of uh, etch a sketch emulator? What what are we looking at here? That that looks that looks crazy. Ah, okay, finally. Yep, and I can see I just pushed a big mass of solder back into the glass tube on this thing. It's an old stream etch a sketch. Hey, sounds fun. So we are just about to to dive into the process of recapping this uh, color Tandy Color Computer Three board. I've got a great uh, cap kit here from <coughs> RetroRewind.ca, <coughs> who's who's hanging out in the chat, telling me telling me how it is, making sure I don't screw this up. Uh, thank you so much for the follow, Retro Rewind. Appreciate it. It's an Amiga program, possibly an Amiga format disc. So that's cool. Well, hmm. All right. This is not going to go so well. <laughs> I just noticed there's an RF shield on the bottom of this sucker. Dang nabbit. Gonna Retro Rewind has gifted five tier two subs in the channel. Thank you so much, Retro Rewind. That is super, super generous of you. I appreciate it. Um, oops, oops indeed, yes. Um, find these things. So seriously, people, go check out RetroRewind.ca. Um, it's great people, great store, great stuff. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to have that uh, on in North America. All right, so it looks like... See, I'm trying to see. I think these... I think these... Um, pop into the top like this so I can squeeze them with my pliers and push them down through. Yep, that's how we do that. Let me just get all of these guys out. Some of them are positioned between these ports. That's not fun. And then let me try not to lose too many of them also while I'm doing this. All right, I'm getting the hang of it. I can grab it from the top and push it down just a little bit. And then I can get it underneath. Except when I over overdo it and throw them across my board. Squeeze them with your fingers. They're just thin tin. Yeah, but I don't know if I can get my fat fingers in there. Get a hold of it. I'm going to do it with the pliers right now. Besides the fact that I have gone like two streams in a row now, injuring myself with thin, flat pieces of metal. So, try not to draw too much blood on this stream. Oh, so, speaking about uh, streams of the past, might, might find your missing screw. Yeah, I might. Um, I'll find it around here somewhere. I'm, I'm not going to spend more time looking at it. So, last, last week... Um, Sigurbjorn, uh, you were pointing out that uh, about we were talking about the twist in the Amiga floppy cable, and I was just like, there's got to be a way to deal with this, and it turns out there is. If you strap the M0 jumper on the GoTech, it undoes that twist in software. So, uh, yeah, it's, it is now working perfectly, loading loading stuff off my uh, GoTech and it shows up on Workbench and all is right with my A1200 world. 
Yeah, no pressure. Just, you know, the professionals watching me. Screw this up so bad, he's going to take those gift subs right back. There are a few you need tweezers for towards the back of the board. Yeah, hanging, hanging out between these connectors here, and I don't think I'm going to get these bent nose pliers in there. So... I'll get my get my flat tweezers here. I can, yep, got that one. And got that one. Doesn't work, the warranty claim will be undisputed. <laughs> yeah. Nah, it'll work. If it does if it does if the machine doesn't work after I'm done, it's nobody's fault but my own. And there we go. We are free of that pesky RF shield. Yay. So now we can start. I'm just going to start on this part of the board here and just uh, knock them out. It looks like... All right, so the polarity indication, when you're when you're recapping with electrolytics, these are, these are polarized. They have a plus and a minus. This strip on this side with the little dashes and arrows indicates the negative uh, pin on the capacitors. But the boards are marked oddly. Um, sometimes the boards will mark the negative by filling in the silk screen, but this one appears to mark the positive by, uh, whoops, this one appears to mark the positive with a small dot on the silk screen. If you can, if you can see that, my camera won't focus this closely. Uh, thank you so much, Texas Foosballer, for the 100 bits. I appreciate that. So, um, yeah, this board appears to mark the positive. So you always want to make sure you understand the polarity of the footprints before you start removing caps and can't see what the orientation was. And of course, before doing rework on any board like this, I'm, no, I'm not familiar with, I do want to take a picture. Although I'm sure there's plenty of pictures online. So alright, I'm going to get started and uh, just as I get them out, I'm going to write it down on my pad here. Uh, I guess this view is okay. You don't, you all don't have to stare at my, at my uh, pretty face while I do this. Um, oh, so another thing about these old boards. Um, where's my... I have some, some new solder and I have some flux. Um, yeah, this this solder's been sitting around for thirty years, and it not it is not necessarily going to flow the way I expect it to. So, um, particularly on something where if you can see this this pin uh, of this capacitor is, is sitting on this uh, pretty heavy trace, I'm guessing that's ground. Um, so this is going to suck up a lot of heat off of here. Flex with the cap, you get a flex capacitor, yeah. I'm flexing my capacitors. And I can see a lot of flux gunk on the bottom of this board too, but that's not at all unusual for a Tandy board. Look at the bottom of a Model 100 sometime. Those things are disgusting on the backside. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put the heat gun on here and just see what it does flow wise. And I'm probably gonna come back here and uh, redo. Oh, hello, hello, Spambot. You can go to hell. All right, 22 gigawatts. Yeah, a little, little more than my iron can handle. All right, so let's see how this let's see how this does when I when I put the heat on it. That actually came really easily. So we might not have to fight with this one too much. Hey, amigos, retro gaming, how you doing? Um, we are we are recapping a, a we're recapping a Coco three tonight. 
so yeah, um, don't need don't need any tricks. Sometimes um, if you if you have uh, this 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 came out came out super easy, and there's a lot of gunk on the bottom, but I think that's mostly just glue. Yeah, I got my Cocoa 3 board out. Sometimes uh, when you're trying to do recaps and, and you're looking at these things, why did I go to that view? This is a better view. Uh, you just wind up fighting with these things, and there's a couple of techniques you can use. Um, one, putting putting flux on the joint will help spread the heat around and uh, work off the corrosion that's preventing the heat from getting in there. But another, another thing you usually have to do is apply fresh solder to the joint with, with your iron to loosen up and get the solder going and then you can you can suck it off with the vacuum gun but in this case uh, it came off so easily I might not have to do that so anyway um, that was C C29 and that's the uh, 4700 um, 16 volt On to C31, if I can manage to only unsolder the things that are actually capacitors tonight. There's barely any leg on this one. It was cut really short. Okay, so this one, speak of the devil, this one's being a pain in the butt. So I'm going to come in here with my iron. Wow, got uh, having having a party here tonight. Lots lots of good people showing up. I uh, hope you all are having a good evening. So once this yeah this this iron heats up super fast too. I love it. So I'm just gonna get some nice modern. Uh, this is good quality rosin core flux. It's 6337, but 6040 will work. Hey, thank you for shouting out Amigos Retro Gaming. Oh, the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. What? All right, so I'm gonna apply some fresh solder here. Yes, yes, superb owl Sunday. That's right. Let's see if that if that managed to get disconnected. Did this top one though? This top one. Not not a happy camper. All right, flux. Fresh solder. Leave the iron on there for a minute. All right, that sounded better. That sounded better. All right, I think I'm also fighting a little bit of glue on this guy too. Yeah, all right, bottom pin is good. Top pin, not as good. So we will just hold the iron on there while we remove you. Yeah. Uh, lots of gunk, but again, I think it's just glue. We can check it out later. Um, the copper clips at the top. Um, these, I think, uh, go up and make contact with the keyboard when you when you put the keyboard back down, and just brings the ground up. Uh, to that part of the chassis now it's this bodge wire on here is soldered directly to the 6821 which I think is just an, an peripheral interface chip of some sort and brings comes back to ground so I don't know if that pin actually appears to be unconnected on the board so I guess this is this is a functional bodge. That's that's a really weird bodge. Uh, 
yeah, caps rolling everywhere. I should have, I, I wanted to get a look at, at the caps before I proceeded with, with the uh, replacement. I should have put these back in something better. I'm setting a horrible example. I'm gonna put these into this conveniently labeled box. All right. Right, be sure and write that down. So that's C31, and we are a 220 mic, 16 volt. 220, 16. Yeah, looking, looking kind of, looking kind of scraggly on the uh, underneath these chips. I wonder if I can get any of that off with. IPA or if I need heat. Oh yeah, it just it pretty much rubs right off at this point. It's so old. And I can't tell if this pad is corroded or if that's just this this crappy glue. Um, I think it is actually a bit corroded on the bottom of that capacitor here, C31 that I just removed. Um, C29 looks looks beautiful. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit that with the pen. Hang on. Assuming I can find it. Which is sadly a very big assumption. Uh, mm. Can't find my fiberglass pen. That is annoying. That is annoying. Oh well. Going to move on. Uh, I'll come back to that later. All right, C15. And you are a 100 mic, 16 volt. No problems. Yep. So this this capacitor that I just fought with is definitely corroded, and that's that corrosion. I can see it on the legs. That corrosion is is why it wasn't so easy to remove that capacitor, is because corroded solder is does not melt and flow like proper solder. It's it's, it's always a fight. The Tandy Model One Hundred is is the worst because every capacitor in the power supply section has leaked by now and often destroyed nearby components. All right, C62, 220, So I wonder what the voltages coming into this power supply are from the transformer. And again, yep, the polarity is marked correctly. Smells fishy. Um, it probably would if I applied a little bit more heat, a little bit more heat to it. I have definitely had fishy smelling capacitors before. My my Amiga 3000, when I, I took it out of my closet for the, after a year, turned it on, and it just stunk up the whole room as soon as I turned it on. You out. All right, C63 is your little friend here. And we're looking like 25 volt, 220. So same thing, 220, 25. 
And there probably are capacitor maps and capacitor lists for this thing that I could pull off the internet, but I don't know. I'm just going to write it down in my notebook. Next. All right, so this guy's up against this metal shield here. Oh, yeah, I'm sure the service manuals. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've already downloaded it, Curtis. Not that I've necessarily looked at it, but... All right, so you're at 10 mic, 25 volt. At, I can't read the designator. C24. The designator for this is actually printed on top of a piece of metal. So they got silk screen on top of metal, and it makes it really hard to read. Um, but yeah. 10 mic, 25 volt. Hey, Jason Warns. Uh, the patient tonight is a Color Computer 3 from Tandy. We're doing a recap on it. Funny how caps smell fishy and vintage 70 radios with boiling caps smell undescribably something else. Luckily, I've never smelled that. I have a stubborn component. I like to add fresh solder before removing. Yep, um, so I had to do that on one of the caps a little while ago. How's it going, 5200 uh, game by game? How you doing? Um, I think it's these pads right here. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Is it free? It is almost free. There we go. And yeah, 10 mic, 25 volt. Oh, Jelly Be Good, thank you so much for gifting the sub to 5200 game by game. Um, you are absolutely on fire tonight. Thank you so much. I hope you're all in enjoying watching me stare at this board and, and suck parts off with a really loud uh, really loud vacuum gun. All right, so we've got another glued down capacitor over here. And I can... Oh, no. It, the glue just bro broke completely. This is so old. And again, I cannot read the designator. Because it is covered with glue. I'm wondering if I can flake a little bit off with this uh, machinist's pick. Um, looks like C64 I'm going to go with. That's in sequence. This is slightly larger, 47016. 47016. All right. But the glue is broken, so this should this should come off easily enough. Yep, very very easy. I'm very surprised how how easy a lot of these capacitors are coming out. Usually stuff this old I have a big fight with. Although I suppose this machine's not quite as old as some of the other stuff in my collection. All right, C55, we've got a 10 mic, 25 volt. And then right next to it, C67, looks probably another 10 mic, 25, yeah. I know the kit was full of, of 10 mic, 25s, so. Hoping you're hoping to watch this tonight. Cool. Not looking forward to going through your pet. All right. Um, I I don't think a pet should be too bad. All right. Um, 
I'm completely guessing what the oh it's it's right next to this okay so it's these two here probably because I have totally desoldered the wrong component on stream because I got my pads confused that was not fun built in 1986 early 87 yep um, significantly newer than the uh, 82, 83 Tandy 100s that I sometimes have to deal with. All right, C9. Uh, I think it is these pads here. So it occurs to me, um, mostly because I was watching a video by, uh, uh, oh God, hundred, yeah, PVMs. Heck no, nope, 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 nope. nope. I've done, I've done arcade monitors with 40 some capacitors on them, and that was a nightmare. Uh, I can't imagine doing a PVM. We need to get a Coco STC. Funny you should mention that. Retro Rewind is now selling Coco STCs. Um, if you want to throw a link uh, link to that in, in chat, in case anyone's looking for one. Yeah, I did my Amiga 1200 uh, Texas Foosballer. It was it was interesting. Um, I I completely destroyed the first pad that I messed with because I had. My settings way too hot for that board. That board is the my Mega twelve hundred board was dangerous board. All right, um, all right. So I think we're dealing with these two pads right there. Um, surface mount caps are scary. Um, th I mean, yes, but I, I eventually for mine, I just I completely uh, wussed out. And uh, removed them with uh, SRA fast chip. Let me see if I can actually get my camera to show this. Turn off this light. Um, this is uh, removal alloy that melts at a very low temperature. So I was able to to remove the old caps at under 300 degrees. I think maybe I was running at 280 on my soldering iron, and that was enough to prevent further damage to my A1200 board. I didn't lift any more pads once I started using this stuff. And uh, and running a much lower temperature on my iron, a four thousand with a heated hot air and pliers. A lot of people do use hot air. Um, there's a lot of plastic parts in in an A twelve hundred around there that I didn't want to mess with hot air. Uh, but like a, this this stuff worked great. It's a little pricey, uh, but worth the money for me. Absolutely. Someone someone who does you know ten ten twenty recaps a week. I'm sure they've developed a different technique, but. Uh, that that worked for me. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, it is fantastic stuff. Two twelve hundreds and a CD thirty two that need to be recapped. Um, uh, Retro Rewind will recap Amigas too. So uh, use a reflow oven. Oh, nice. I I had not I would not have thought of that, but that's great. Yeah. Three thousand and seven five hundreds. The caps look great. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know much about the Amiga models, which ones really need recaps other than the 1200 and the CD32. Um, but anyway, uh, rather than using the uh, vacuum gun, for people who are interested in removing stuff, and again, I caution people, don't learn on old equipment, right? It's very unforgiving. But in case you do need to do some of this stuff, I'm going to show you how it's done with a wick. Let me get my solder wick out. This is apparently the stream where I'm not allowed to find anything that I own.
Okay, well, I guess I won't be demonstrating that then. <laughs> Cut those Varda batteries out. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Proton Fig, how are you doing? All right, 600, 1200, 4000, CD32. Get them recapped now. Okay, there you have it. From, from the mouth of the expert. Well, super frustrating, but I can't find my solder wick, so I guess I'm not going to demonstrate how it's done with the desoldering wick. Curses. All right. The 3000, you only need to recap the PSU. Yeah, the, uh, so I recapped the PSU on, on the one that I uh, sent off to Tim. Because, um, like I said, you know, I took it out of storage one day to use it, turned it on, and it just smelled like fish. All right. So that was C9. And that is a uh, hundred mic sixteen. PCB is actually cracked. Ooh. Um, well, uh, check out. Yeah, Sigur Bruins A4000 is, is nice. You're talking about the 4000T? <laughs> and, and of course, of course, it's not an Amiga stream that comes up. But thank you for shouting out Sigurd Bjorn too. Um, another great channel. I hang out there a lot. Um, fun games, uh, bad jokes, everything you could want in, in a retro stream. Silly bot, exactly. I have a re Amiga board, but the work of transplanting all those chips is way beyond. Ooh, yeah. So is so the 4000, is your logic board cracked or is the power supply board cracked? Because that's a big difference. Yeah, check out Sigurd Bjorn's Might and Magic. Yeah. 1,000 microfarad cap and the 3,000 should be bumped up to 1,200. Ah, okay. Cap that usually fails in the 3,000. Ooh, logic board crack. Okay, yep. Nope, that's... I was going to say, if it's the power supply, they're usually single-sided, and you can jumper where the cracks went, and everything is fine. But yeah, logic board, no. Yeah, all right, I wish I'd known that. Of course, you know... Um, Tim, Tim wound up replacing the power supply in that 3000 anyway because um, uh, he plugged a 110 power supply into UK240 and uh, kind of cooked it. But, all right, so C3 is our next, our next guest here. And you are probably another 10 mic 16, right? Why can't I read this? Oh no, you're a one mic fifty. Really, fifty volts? Okay, if you say so. Oh, JB, thank you so much for the uh, thank you so much for the uh, for the subscription. I appreciate it, and uh, and thank you for the follow, Proton Fig. Thank you so much. Uh, he asked me to convert the 110 to 220 for him. Oh, is Tim... Uh, so Tim might be sending you that very same power supply, um, which is cool. So when you get that power supply, I'm really curious to know, because he says that the thing blew up on him, and I don't know if it's because of the 110, or I'm kind of afraid that um, I might have put one of the capacitors in backwards, because he says it something happened that sounded just like that. So if you see that, that was me. 50 volt through the ESR rating keeps... Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Here we go. Bingo. Let me know. Thanks. Yeah. 
See, you'll see if I, if I screw that up. That was my first time working on an Amiga. Um, a couple of years ago, before I did more stuff and learned more stuff. All else fails. Curtis can help. Curtis helps a lot. I've gotten a lot of good. I've gotten a lot of good advice from a lot of people on this on this stream, honestly. Uh, and it's and it's quite awesome. All right. That didn't sound right. Oh yeah, that's because you are sitting on a big honking ground plane. So, as was mentioned, sometimes you just need to get in there and add some fresh solder. So that is what I'm going to do right here. Um, actually, I'm going to put some flux on first, then I'm going to add some fresh solder. Let me zoom in on this, maybe. You can see a little bit better. A little tiny bit better. All right. I love that this TS-100 has the oomph to, to take care of a, soldering a pad on a really big ground plane. It's, it's actually more powerful than my, than my Heiko. I really dig it. All right, now I can feel it's free. Done. Yeah, C27, that's a 100 mic 16. Do you recognize some opcodes on site? Nice. That's like, uh, what's, that, what's that meme or something, you know? What, what is your mundane superpower? And uh, recognizing CPU opcodes on site it sounds like a, a great mundane superpower to me. All right, I think I just got these two guys left here, C2 and C56, and they both look the same. 10 mic 25, I think, on both of them. I uh, can't, can't quite read this one, but they look the same. I think they're both 10 mic 25. Nice right here on these pads. <laughs> You clear. Yeah, C C two and C fifty six, and they are. Ten mic twenty five and ten mic twenty five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And in our kit recognize opcodes a mile away, yeah. Um all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. All right, I think I think we're done because I don't see any more capacitors on the board, and I think my count is right. Um, uh, yes, uh, this is a Coco Three, indeed. It's a Coco Three board. Miss capping. <laughs> How's it going? Hey, ball engineer. How you? It's it's going well. Uh, I've I've had uh, only a couple of troublesome caps. Uh, some of them were glued down, but the glue is so old that it snapped right off. Um, things are going well. I was going to demonstrate desoldering with wick, and then I couldn't find my solder wick. So that's kind of how things are going. Every cap and the location is there. I I, f I figured as much. Um, but I I have a little notebook that I've uh, been been compiling with all the PSUs that I've worked on, cap locations and stuff. So I'm just going to transcribe from this pad into that notebook when I'm done. But all right, let's uh, let's get going. So, I'm going to start uh, this side of the board, I think, and just work my way that way. I don't... I can turn off the 
the vacuum gun now. I don't think I'm going to need to come back to that again tonight. Uh, well, if I move on to the processor, I will, because here's, here's our 6809 EP CPU right there. Coco SDC order placed. Nice. You, you will get a much nicer Coco SDC than mine. This, this is my, my Tandy Assembly special Coco SDC in a fairly iffy uh, 3D printed case, but it works. It works. Yeah, desoldering with wick, um, sometimes, well, I don't know, sometimes for me it's like it's, it's the right way to do it because of the placement of a component or, you know, something like that. Um, but, you know, if you don't want to invest $150 to $180 in a vacuum gun and you don't want to, you know, suffer through life with one of these guys, which do a fairly horrible job. Yeah, braid works really well if it's good braid, if it's good desoldering braid. And uh, at Bald Engineer's suggestion, I picked up some uh, uh, MG Chemicals Super Wick. And yeah, that stuff is really good. Because I've been using cheap stuff and just adding my own flux. But, uh, yeah. Alright, so I'm actually now, I think, going gonna, gonna to readjust the camera and work from the stool. Yeah, MG Wick is is really good. Shoemaker's kids wear the worst shoes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, if if I mean, it doesn't have to be in a case. It's just nice to have it in a case. Um, all right, so we're gonna start with C twenty six, and I'm gonna I have this multicolor pen here, so I've been writing things down in black, and I'm going to put a little red mark on my pad next to it when I'm done. <laughs> Alright. Uh... Oh, no, C27, not C26. C26 is a little mylar here, that's not it. Alright, Hunter Mike 16. Let the hunting begin. It's going to be probably something like this. Yep, Hunter Mike 16. So, I've got some nice chemits. I prefer to clip my capacitors out of the strip rather than yank them out. Yeah, uh, Proton, I got some of it. Long, uh, long, long threads here. I'm, I'm completely losing chat. I'm sorry. All right. So, as I was saying before, the oh, Texas foosballer. Thank you so much for for uh, gifting a gifting a tier one sub. Um, all right. So the this this mark. Uh, there's a little dot on the circle of the silk screen of the capacitor, and that marks the positive on this board. So I'm going to put the negative away from that mark. Started using it like it for through hole removals. So, so are we talking about the the low temperature alloy? Are we talking about um, wick now? I've completely lost the thread. Low temperature alloy. Yeah, yeah. The I I like I like SRA stuff. This is the SRA fast chip. Um, four and a half feet of it lasts me a good long time, and it's not too expensive. All right. Now, this guy's leads are... I, I like to just bend the leads out just a little tiny bit, and it stays in the pads long enough to solder it. So I'm going to get my uh, 6337 solder, and I am using, I am using lead s solder. Uh, this is this is vintage equipment, um, and it was made with leaded solder. You don't want to use uh, ROHS unleaded solder on this because the board's not designed to take those temperatures, and you're going to be mixing with leaded solder. And when you mix leaded solder with unleaded solder, you don't get a very stable alloy. I think it's prone to cracking. So you should always use the same type of solder to repair the equipment as it was built with. 
We have to temperature. Oh, you're on a big ground pad, so I am going to boost you to get a little bit more heat here. All right, there we go. Done. All right. Just a reminder that when business mixes with lead, the melting point is now 100 C. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you use desoldering alloy, you abso-freaking-lutely want to get all of that stuff off before you replace the chip. <laughs> all right, um, all right, C3, you are next. You're, a, you're that one mic 50. So let me find you probably this guy. Yep, one mic 50. Nice, nice Nietzsche con. <laughs> I'm gonna bring my soldering stand down here. I have to keep reaching up across my bench. Whoops. Thought it was gonna stay in the hole, but it fell off since I heated it. C2 and C56. These are 10 mic 25s. I think we've got a small strip of those in here. Or maybe not. Maybe they're these loose guys. Yeah, there's these, there's these loose guys. God, they're so small. They are so small. And I forgot what the pads I was working on was. C2 and C56, they're right next to each other. This is why having capacitor maps is useful, because, you know, you don't... Right, they're up here. Alright, another, another 10 mic 25. You don't have to hunt around the board quite as much when you have the, the map to look at. All right, just give these guys a little little bend out so they hang around while I solder them. All and so I have not, I, I should mention, I have not cleaned up this board after depopulating the old capacitors except for the one which obviously leaked. Uh, if you if you are working on a board where you've experienced cap leakage, you need to, you do need to make sure that you get all the crud and stuff off of the board. But this one's actually in, in really good shape. Uh, so I I don't need to clean up any of the bottom of the board before installing the new capacitors. They're just going right in and they're taking solder very nicely. Um, all right, C55, that's another 10 mic 25, which I think I have one last one. Yeah, 10 mic 25. Actually, I don't think I used enough solder on this. This this solder I'm using is particularly thin because uh, I got it for uh, doing some surface mount uh, drag soldering work. So I have to add a lot. I have to add a lot of length in order to get enough solder in there. Sometimes I, I tend to under solder things. All right, C67, which is another 10 mic 25. Oh, there's another one. Okay, good.
Huh, okay. So, this is interesting. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. The footprint that I'm working on is right here, C67. And I mentioned that they mark the positive with this dot, but the dot is not aligned with either of the terminals. Um, so, I might just hold off on this one and consult the wiki to make sure I get this right in there with the right polarity, uh, because it's not obvious which one is ground. Sometimes you can you can tell for sure one of these is on a ground plane or something. But in this case, it's not obvious to me which one is the positive and which one's the negative. Oh, this is a bipolar cap. Ah, uh, okay, well that does explain things now, doesn't it? Um, C67, all right, so this was a 10 mic 25, but all right. So this must, uh, all right, yeah, this, thank you, thank you. It is in the kit, this is, indeed. Um, so uh, I, I mentioned the capacitors have polarity. Sometimes that's not acceptable because you have a signal that needs to swing above and below zero, like audio. So you have a bipolar capacitor, and what this is is actually two capacitors, two polarized capacitors in parallel so that one handles one direction and the other one handles the other direction. And yeah, like Retro Rewind just said, there's no stripe on this capacitor. Uh, it, has, it has no polarity marking because it is bipolar. In series, right. Okay, thank you, Ball Engineer. Um, yeah, all right. So that's, that, is why, that is why that looked weird. And I'll bet that that's in the notes on the wiki that I just haven't read. All right, I think I did read them, but I haven't read them enough that they were clear in my mind. Some kind of joke about depression. <laughs> it's real tech. No, yes, it, it is a real technical term. Bi bipolar. All right. Ten mic sixty-seven. I'm glad I didn't accidentally install that in the wrong place. Although I probably would have noticed, because it you can see it's much physically much larger than these other ten mic twenty-fives, and it's because there's two of them in the package. All right. Where's our last ten mic twenty-five? C twenty-four. Where are you? You're up here. And again, your pol so this one's polarity is just not marked. That's a bummer. All right, so it's not connected on the back side. All the connections are here on the top side. And all right, so this one actually connects. I can see this terminal connects to a ground plane. So uh, that's obviously the negative. Um, I'm trying to see if I'm missing some clue on the silk screen. I don't think I am. But this is this this silk screen is printed right up against some metal, so that 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 should be the correct orientation. Um, which cap is this? This is uh, C24. It's the last 10 mic 25 that I have to do. Um, But uh, we should actually be able to, to check that because this pin here should be connected to ground. So let me go ahead and fire this up. C24 is another bipolar cap. Ah. Well, that's weird because one side of it appears to be connected to a ground plane. At least that's, that was my... C24 is the bipolar cap. So I installed the bipolar cap. Oh, I did. I absolutely did. I installed the bipolar cap in C67 instead of C24. Like some sort of idiot. I know I was looking. Yeah, okay. So, so 
then I need to figure out what the polarity of C67 is. Some capacitors have metal as their anode and oxide as the dielectric. These are value metals. Their oxide only grows in the electric field is in one direction. When reversed, the oxide actually breaks down. Okay, all right, let me... Uh, I'll have to, have to remove that one. I'm going to have to trim these leads just a little bit so I can get the... Get the vacuum gun on it. Yeah, because, yeah, C67 has a mark on it, but it's not obvious which of the two... Val oh, valve metals. Okay, all right, yeah. All right, well, C24 has... I'll have to wait on that one while, while my vacuum gun heats up. In the meantime, uh, let's move on. C9, that's 100 mic 16. That one should not be any trouble. I'm guessing it's this guy. No, that's a 220. What do we got here? It's another 220. It's another 220. Where's my 100 mic 16s? Oh no! Have I lost a capacitor? No. It's right here. These are my 100 mic 16s. I just didn't put them back in the case after I was done with them. I like that on-screen DMM display. The on-screen DMM display is awesome. Although, of course, it turns out I don't need it right now. But, all right, C9, 100 mic 16. Negative is clearly marked. In we go. Spread them. And let's solder it down. Let's solder it down. Muy bien. Excelente. And I, I'm, I'm not trimming the leads on any of these yet because just in case I run into another case of stupid, like I did putting the bipolar cap in the wrong place, um, not having trimmed the leads will make it a little bit easier to move that capacitor to the right place. All right, so that's C9 done. Um, all right, actually, I can go ahead and turn this off because I don't think I'm going to need it right now. 67 is just is one just to the right of the RF modulator. Um, yeah, yes, it is. So now the, I'm gonna go ahead and, and and remove that bipolar cap. Oh, that's so annoying. I didn't pay attention to that. guys loose. Yeah, there we are. All right. You're the bipolar and Oh, no. It's okay. It's just it's just solder that didn't get sucked up. I thought for a minute I had lifted both pads. I'm like, that's that's no good. No. Some, that was some top-class janky desoldering what I just did, but had to be done. Negative is toward the front of the board. Thank you so much. All right. C67, again. Negative toward the front of the board. So they've, they do have the positive dot ever so slightly towards the back of the board. So, if I had taken a guess, I guess my guess would have been right. 
or I would have gone and looked at photos. Or ask Curtis. Which is, of course, what we all do. We need to know something about a cocoa. When a different chemist or just have one capacitor, which is electrically symmetrical. Well, I mean, there there are different types of capacitors. Yeah, what what Bald Engineer is is saying. There's different types of. You can have non-polarized capacitors, but they don't have the same capacitance. You pretty, for some of these things, you just uh, aluminum electrolytic is really the only chemistry that will work for you. <laughs> okay, C67 for realsies or C24, rather, the one with no actual dot. And yeah, uh, this, this, this all makes perfect sense because um, it's, it's back here near where the output, the audio output would be. I'm trying to see, where's the rest of the audio circuit here? Um, often is next to op amps, like uh, on, on the Amiga 1200. Um, there's a couple of bipolar... Uh, audio caps right next to the op amp that, that comes off the Paula chip. I don't actually see the rest of the audio circuit, but all right, we'll continue. And thank you once again for your service, Mr. Vacuum Gun. Can't count how many 1200s and 400s I've had to recap because someone decided to use ceramic caps. And after 20 hours of use, weird things started happening. Um, oh, yeah, because their ESR is way off to the... Re yeah, it's... Yeah, I, I know a lot of people will put um, tantalum caps in Max as well. And uh, I don't know. I don't, when, 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 there's an, when there's an electrolytic, I'll replace it with an electrolytic. Unless I know for sure that someone tells me that, that an alternative chemistry is preferred. All right, so that was C24, the bipolar, done. All right, getting into some of the larger values now. Uh, C63, 220, 25, we got a bunch of those. This is a, this is a 220, 50, which is fine to replace <clears throat> with the same capacitance, but a slightly higher voltage. Um, all right. See, yeah, see, 63, 220, And then 62 is also the same thing, a 220, 20, 25, which we are replacing with a 50. I'm just double checking the polarity on this. Yep, I got it right. Smoothing caps for a reason, yeah. I mean, I've used exotic capacitors in audio circuits before because I know that I wanted a particularly low ESR in one case or something, but most of these things, aluminum electrolytic is, is the right choice. Although, I know, Bald Engineer, you're, some, you're often a fan of aluminum polymer. Maybe you can expound briefly on, the, on when you want to use aluminum polymer versus liquid electrolyte better than polyester underwear <laughs> yeah all right so that's u2 all right two two twenty sixteen which we're probably also replacing with a two twenty fifty yeah and c thirty one which is right here again positive marked all right this guy um That is, this one did definitely experience some corrosion. I can see it right there. Um, yeah, they won't leak, but uh, they have a very different ESR from, from the original, right? Let's see. That that is connecting 
a big ground plane on the top with a ground trace on the bottom. So I am in fact going to make sure that this uh, via is intact. One tenth ESR versus tan on caps. Solder on the pad doesn't stick to it, it's probably corroded. I mean, I can see it's corroded. Um, Armor caps have orders of magnitude less ESR. For linear supplies is fine. Yeah. Mac community does seem to prefer tantalum from what I've seen. Yeah, I, I always see people when, they, when they're doing toaster Macs, they, they put um, tantalums in instead of electrolytics. Well, except, for, um, except for Adrian Black. All right, so this... All right. Okay, that's that's good, but there yeah, there's a little bit of corrosion. But what I want to make sure is that it still connects to the other side of this trace, which is right here. Help when I get my probes in correctly. Okay. Yeah, all right, that looks good. People call the polymer an electrolyte. It isn't. The polymer is the cathode material and not a salt. It's literally conductive plastic. Cool. All right, um, so yes, this, my, my fears about this via being damaged on one side or the other look unfounded. So I think, I think it's gonna be fine to go ahead and, and do this. Um, again, I just cannot, for the life of me, figure what I did with my fiberglass pen. I think I had it out to use, and I don't know what I did with it, because I'm terrible about putting things back where they belong. Chemistry is way different section, the art of electronics about it. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so we're down to our last three capacitors, and we can fire this thing back up again. Got a 100 mic. Oh, all right, so we got one last 220, and that goes at C31. That's the one, that's the one I'm concerned about. So we'll go ahead and install that one. I saw you slipping down. You're not allowed to slip down. Get back up there. All right. C31. C15, which is 100 mic 16. That's our last little Kemet here. A lot of exploding stuff, caps, batteries, yeah. Caps, batteries, high voltage transformers. There's a reason why classic Macs are out of scope for my collection. I do not have time to deal with classic Macs. For such an expensive machine, you would think they would have used better parts. That smells horrible. This lead up here has got a bunch of old, nasty, crusty flux on it. Oh, sorry, it's out of camera, but I have my alcohol there. UL94 says it cannot sustain a fire if started, which most tantalums don't have enough mass to do. Oh, okay. I'll bypass caps of tantalums, all of them had UL94. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it won't sustain a fire, merely start one. 
Okay. Um, 470. Oh, 470, 16. All right, C64. Hey, we have to do caps C64. But um, All right, that's you up here. This is right next to the reset switch. This must be part of the reset circuit. Must be the C in the uh, in the LC constant for the reset pulse. Drag you into some Twitter debates. <laughs> oh Lord. Like to listen isn't in the bad nineties mean doesn't mean you shouldn't replace it. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. B before you guys showed up, I was I was talking about, you know, the the relative merits of, you know, should you should you recap or should you not things. And I'm firmly on the on the camp of you should recap everything, but you should use the right capacitors and you should be competent at rework when you do it. Because so many people think, oh, my computer's broken, let me just recap it, that'll fix it. And no, it's not always going to fix your machine. Uh, and you're, if you don't know what you're doing, you're liable to do more damage to the machine attempting the recap. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if you were here when I talked about the Tandy 100 I got in that had been recapped, but all the legs were still on the bottom, and they were just folded over, shorting everything underneath it. Um, I've definitely seen some, some real butcher jobs at people who had no business recapping a machine. I'm, I'm all for people learning to do this work, learning to work on electronics, but yeah, people have to understand that rework, repairing old equipment, is very different than soldering a kit you got from Adafruit or something. Um, rework is a lot more complicated you're not dealing with fresh parts. You're dealing with parts that don't want to be soldered or desoldered. You're dealing with stuff that's just positively ancient sometimes. All right. I'm, I'm boosting up my iron here because this guy's on a great big ground plane. Just going to apply a little bit more temperature. And that did it. All sorts of... Just asked Doug from Tenmark. He shorted five caps, then fed a power supply that was way overrated for... Oh! Oh! Ouch! I'll learn to do this by working on a C64, yeah. So I'm, I am I helped a guy uh, do a recap on a, on a classic Mac, a Mac 128. And yeah, I was like, you know, go get some... Go get some electronics practice stuff. Learn, learn to do basic solder joints. And then I will come over and I will show you the right techniques to go from there to rework. And we did, and it worked out, and, and he's got a working Mac now. <laughs> so that is our last capacitor. Our last capacitator. All capacitators have been recapacitated. So let's cut off all of the legs. And I like to save my legs because they make great jumpers sometimes. But that's just me. if your cut leads to the trash can. <laughs> I, I was working on something the other day and I needed a little quick jumper, so I just grabbed an old part com component lead and, and made a quick jumper. It was it was nice. It was nice to have. Started practicing on scrap boards. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
for uh, SMD cap removal for me, uh, absolutely do not twist those things. Absolutely do not twist those things is, is where I come down on that. Um, if, if the, if the component is, is damaged, um, you're liable to, to, if it's been leaking and it's compromised the board and you try to twist the thing off, you have, from what I've seen, about a 50-50 chance of twist off the capacitor and the capacitor disintegrates cleanly, or twist off the capacitor and it takes the pads with it. Um, yeah, 50-50 if you're lucky. Uh, you're, the, 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 the likelihood for ripping up pads is extremely high, extremely high. So, oh, I always desolder. Stuck to the top of your power distribution. All right, I, I'm gonna have to scroll back in chat. I think I've missed too much here. Caps are used for various tasks from power conditioning to noise filtering. To, yeah, capacitors are a dark art. Capacitors are a dark art. People who understand them are dark wizards and should never be trusted. Magnetics part trays. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, those would be nice. You're either an idiot or have too many YouTube followers. I do not have too many YouTube followers. We will leave it at that. All right. A little bit of cleanup. A little bit of cleanup. There's so much old tan deflux on this anyway that this is almost pointless. But uh, I'm going to do it too because, oh yeah, it gives me a chance to look and see which uh, cap leads I've forgotten to snip still because there's one right there. I'm just going to clean up some of the more egregious flux jobs on the bottom, on the back of this board. Yeah, this, this connector is just absolutely flooded with flux. Um, I might, I might clean this board with the, with the SID technique later. Um, uh, but for now, I think that's good. And it's getting, getting late. I think it's time to test this board. Ripped pads, yeah. Uh, I do not love replacing, repairing ripped pads. I absolutely do not love it. Uh, I turn off my iron. Move my pads, or my, my, my spare legs. Where did I put the base of the system? Oh, it's over here, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to need this because it has the transformer in it, and I can't just fire up the board by itself without the transformer. So, yeah. Move these screws. There's the last one. Hey, Coffee Cup Arcade, how you doing? Stream for a collection of whoops, I screwed up some pads. Can you please fix the pictures? Yeah, yeah, uh, give Retro Rewind a follow on Twitter as well. It, um, he does post some some great before and after uh, photos. Uh, offer on her house accepted, her house up for sale and sold in three days. Holy Crud, you're not kidding. I, 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 I knew you were packing a move, but I didn't know it was it was that imminent. And I'm sure you sold it in... I'm surprised you didn't sell it in a matter of hours in this market. This market is absolutely crazy. Buack found an A1200 recap video once. Some guy had two irons and a crocodile clamp. The cap and a wire over a beam with a spanner. What? That That sounds crazy. I know I know some people do use hot SMD tweezers to remove uh, two leg components. I I will use the 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 fast chip or two soldering irons, one on each leg. 
but I'm much better with the fast trip. 18 walkthroughs and 12 offers day one. Yeah, okay, yeah. All right, yeah. Lose the cap, and then the spanner would pull the cap. Third hand, sort of. Oh, okay. Well, all right. I think I, th I think I think I understand what you're saying a little bit better now. Um, now let's do before I fire up anything like this. Let's do some basic electrical safety checks. Turn on the Bluetooth. All right. Um, find a find a good ground point here. There, that's a good ground point. Okay. Oh wait, turn the power switch on. That would help. Three mega ohms. Yeah, no problem. Short. All right. That's because yeah, that's the black wire. That's ground. We're exp we we want that to be short, and 3.5 mega ohms. Yeah. All right. So we're not about to short anything. Um, and then cross the two mega ohms. Yep. All right. Looks good. Probably not going to blow anything up when we power this thing on. Though I do have this in a circuit breaker switcher. Uh, circuit breaker protected outlet strip here. All right. Um, we need the video. And it's marked on the silk, so that's nice. I can tell which one of these is the video. And then, let's see. All right, RetroTink is set correctly. Let's uh, light it up. And that's good. So the weirdness that you're seeing is the retro tank. It's not a problem with the cocoa. The retro tank does this thing where it takes a while to get the color. Um, I don't know why. Uh, but there, it eventually figured out that it is green. And so that looks that looks good. Um, I think I'm happy with that. Let's get the cocoa SDC in here uh, and. Um, I guess the keyboard too. For right now, right now I'm just going to let the Coco SDC do its thing because it will automatically boot into SDC Explorer. All right, there we go. It, it's, I don't know if it's automatic gain or if it's a weird chroma thing. Um, I don't know. Uh, thank you for the bits, Sigurbjorn. I, I appreciate it. Hey, Wild Blue the Retro. Hey, how's it going? Uh, we're we're testing out the the freshly recapped Coco Three. We've got the Coco SDC on it now, so we can fire that up. And yep, we're going to SDC Explorer. Um, it might be my imagination, but I think the video looks better. I really do. Um. Cause that that looks that looks nice and sharp. Color sub carrier parallel. It's gonna slow to lock. Could be. Um, uh, all right. Thank thank you all for the congratulations. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Uh, I I don't know, but I have seen this plenty of times before. Where the retro tank just takes a little while to lock on to. I guess I guess it could be the Luma. It could be a really slow AGC. Um, but it just it takes a while to get the colors right. I don't know. Um, yeah, the, the Coco 3 is out of spec, the Apple 2 is out of spec, the uh, Sega Genesis is out of spec, and Mike Chi, the designer of the RetroTink, knows this. He knows these things put off a terrible video signal, and so he has, he has explicitly told me the composite input on the RetroTink Pro, uh, the RetroTink 5X Pro, is stupidly forgiving, and it could be that that's what we're seeing. We're just seeing it trying really hard to figure out what it's supposed to do. Turn off the retro tank. Uh, so my retro tank is powered from my monitor. So whenever I turn my monitor off, it turns the retro tank off. The one that I used to have under my desk when I was streaming games uh, earlier last year was plugged into a power strip and it was on all the time, but that was a 2X Mini. 
Um, I don't think there's a problem leaving the 5X Pro on all the time. Um, it doesn't dissipate that much power. It, it's just USB power, so 10 watts max, it, it should be fine. But um, I love the fact that you can just power these things off of the USB ports on most TVs because Mike does a really good job on the power supply circuit on these things, and they can tolerate it. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm ready to declare success here. I think this is good, so let's go ahead and put some screws back in it. Um, I'm not going to unplug it because uh, this is nicely contained and I'm not liable to kill myself with AC over here. So I feel safe working around it. Let's see. I do have to I guess I do have to take the Coco SDC out to get to get these guys in. Hmm. Ah, alright. These guys shifted a little. These are these little metal pieces. Mine that I use, I have to restart if it's on too long. Doesn't like the TI ninety nine. Uh, do you which which model retro tank do you have, Arcade Shop, or do you have the five X Pro or the or the Pro or the Minis? There's so many so many retro tanks. Uh, the cheaper model, uh, yeah. So um, you might have the Pro or the Mini. If if you're just you know casually into using old computers, um. Uh, Actually, even if you're not, um, even if you're quite serious about it, uh, if what you have is mostly composite and S-Video, like old computers or early consoles, uh, the RetroTINK Mini is a great, great device. I have, I have two of them. Um, this, this is one of my minis, and uh, you've got S-Video and composite stereo audio. HDMI out the back side, and uh, it's 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 480i or 576i to 576p or 480p, so it doesn't line um, it does line double, but doesn't scale up beyond 480p. But you don't need that most of the time unless you really have a terrible scaler in your TV. Yeah, they are they are fantastic little units. 2x mini, yeah. Um, I think maybe I've had to power cycle my mini once or twice. It has, and I, I do remember that it has happened, but it's not frequent. The 2X and the 5X, the 2X is great. I only got the 5X because of SCART. Yeah, I got the 5X because of SCART too, but unfortunately it doesn't work with a lot of my SCART computers. Uh, it works with my ZX Spectrum, works with my Amiga, and I think it works pretty well with my BBC. It doesn't work worth a darn on my Amstrad. So I have to use one of the cheap ones. Um, all right, so that's that's back in. What was next? A keyboard, I guess. Um, I knew I was going to do that. Uh, okay, yeah, so there's, there's these posts here, and then those screw holes. All right, good. And then this sits down into that flex slot. Top case. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, probably going to leave it like that. You have the 2X in line with the OSSC. I pass it into HDMI to component and back to the component input on the OSSC. That's, that's interesting. That's quite a complicated signal path. Older well, Denon receiver has like eight composite S video and it upscales to HDMI variant. Oh, that's cool. The way the composite and S video stuff is on AV2, the AV1 is the SCART, and AV3 I use for the x86 retro. Huh. Mike recommended that for a retro tank OSSC combo. Okay. All right. Um, I have a, I have an old school. Uh, let me pan my camera up here. I have an old school Radio Shack. Uh, S video composite audio switch right here. So uh just you know, 
pop in whatever whatever opponent I need. Yeah, radio. I, I'm a I'm a huge Tandy fan, as you can guess. So I love having old Radio Shack stuff. I picked up um, I picked up this 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 wonderful little portable radio at my at a local thrift store the other day. It's in great condition. It's a it's a later model, realistic, but. Uh, Yeah, uh, it work, works really well. No no fuss, no muss, just composite, and uh, yeah. Skip the 5X and wait for the OSSC Pro. You're gonna be waiting. You're gonna be waiting on the OSSC Pro. Um, I The OSSC Pro does look like a really nice box. It absolutely does. Um, but I think it's gonna be a while. Okay, let's let's fire this fire this back up. I'll check everything with the case. Thirteen inch Radio Shack CRT. You plan to use your monitor when you get a Coco. Nice. That'll be a nice that'll be a nice setup. Um, all right. Ooh, ooh, that's fun. We don't like that. I never run that one. Let me run the other one. Uh, this, so this, this is what I was running during the intro. Let's make sure this still works. Yeah, a little bit of weird graphical stuff going on, um, which again, I'm just gonna blame it on the retro tank. But that seems to be seems to be doing fine. So I think I, I think it's time to declare victory, uh, and it's pretty much time for me to end the stream too. So it forces me to declare victory, whether victory is warranted or not. Uh, 